Hello, 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 my gorgeous people of the world. It is your girl, Robin, and she is back again with yet another sewing tutorial. My name is Robin Hart. I am a local drag queen slash local creator slash local fashion designer based in Cork. In today's video, I am working in collaboration with the Fabric Outlet in Cork and in Newbridge. They have been kind enough to gift me these materials to challenge me to see what I'm able to do with this Mad Hatter mind of mine. So in this video, I will be guiding you through materials, price points, patterns and just generally how I come up with my creative process. If you do have any questions or any queries don't hesitate to ask sound off in that comment section down below or just message me directly. So without further ado let's get into it shall we? <laughs> So what we're going to need to get all of our patterns set up and ready to go is I like to get a centimeter ruler. I prefer the metal ones just because they're a bit stiffer and they're easier to work with when I'm mapping out patterns. You're also going to need your measuring tape. I always make sure that I have an inches and centimeter tape just because it's easier for me to transfer these measurements onto my ruler when I'm actually mapping out the pattern. But it's always handy to keep this on hand because you're always going to need it. I have my plastic head pins. Just keep these on hand, whether you're going to be cutting a fabric on the fold or whether you need to pin your patterns directly onto the fabric itself. It'll just save you a whole lot of time. So before getting started, another thing that I suggest is once you have your fabrics and everything picked out, come up with your sketch. What I did is when I was choosing fabrics from the store, I chose my inspiration for what I wanted to make based off the fabrics I was able to find. So once I found my fabrics, I was like immediately, I was like, this is what I wanted to make. And Luckily enough, the store had every single possible thing I would have needed to make the outfit from zips to snap closures to treads to overlocker treads, you name it, I got it, machine needles, all of it's there. Next of all, if you're going to be doing any patterns that you wouldn't have been used to before, what I typically like to do is I just get A4 paper, copybook paper, and I do my patterns on a much smaller scale. Now I do scale down the measurements correctly, so I think this is like one tenth of the size. So what I'm doing today in this jacket is I'm doing a raglan sleeve. It's not your typical sleeve. It wouldn't end like this here where it cuts off on the shoulder. It actually goes straight from the neckline down past the shoulder curve and down to the end and then it curves across the bodice here as well. So what I did is I just made up a small little pattern here just so I could have it as a reference and I have my measurements written down in my book just so when I am coming to actually making the pattern or cutting it out directly from the fabric that at least I do have something to refer back and if you're going to be getting lovely fabrics like the ones that I have chosen from the fabric outlet you don't want to be wasting them so just make sure that everything you're doing is prepared correctly before you start your project I can't stress that enough just once you have your sketch down take a look at your sketch see what materials that you have mapped out in your sketch so I know like this is how many pockets I'm gonna have what I've done is I've mapped out the measurements and dimensions of each pocket just because they wouldn't be patterns that I would typically have made already because each one is custom to what outfit that I am making. So for this, for the pants, I'm putting 10 pockets onto the pants. So it was just good for me to map them all out, write down how many I need to cut, just to make sure that there's no room for error and no room for mistakes. Same with the jacket. I just mapped out what I'm doing with the sleeves, what I'm doing with the pockets, wh which way I'm laying the bodice out, writing down what materials I need. So if I'm thinking, what do I need now? I know, okay, I have this over here and I can just go and get it and I'm ready to go. So now that we covered what we're going to need to actually create our patterns and get everything ready for ourselves, what we're going to do next is just have a quick chat about materials and what we're going to need to actually create the garment itself. So while in the fabric outlet I picked up a zip just because I'm making a jacket so I was thinking maybe I might put a zip down the middle but just in case I didn't want to go for the zip closure I also picked up these snaps as well. So what's really good about these is it's not something I've been able to find in a lot of fabric stores that I have been looking in around Cork 
and even when I'm shopping online it's really hard because different fabric stores have different names for different things. Just being able to buy this by the meter gave me a great amount of creative freedom to be able to use it in whatever way I want. So for me what I was thinking is once I was making the jacket I was either going to use this as the closure because I wanted to do a funnel neck and it's nice to just be able to pop it and button it back up. Another idea that I had is that you could use these snaps for the raglan sleeve on the top seam that you could run them from all the way to the neckline all the way down to the cuff so in the summer if you're a bit too hot you can make it a bit of a cold shoulder moment or in the winter when it's a bit colder you can have it buttoned up so it's completely tailorable. This is also great if you are a costume designer or you are a fashion designer and you want to make something that is tear away. Because of the way this is made on the strips, you can just sew directly on down the seam. And if you wanted to do the tear away then, it's just like that. Nice and easy. These are really good quality snaps and I'm very happy with them. So it was definitely a good find. So I'll be keeping the, both of these in mind for different closures that I'll be doing on the pants and on the jacket. So next we're going to be moving on to fabrics. And let me just say for 4 95 a meter, you are getting much better quality than you would expect. Every single fabric I have gotten from there has been up to the highest quality and even better than some of the competitors that I've been supporting around Cork or around Ireland online. Now for 4 95 a meter I was able to get this satin finished black fabric that has a green undertone because it's backed with this green khaki fabric but it's so strong and it's so durable whereas in other stores I've bought black lining fabrics that are so paper thin that they don't actually do the job that they're meant to do. With this fabric this is going to be the outer shell of the outfit that I am creating today just because I love the satin finish it kind of gives that luxe elegant feel. This is one fabric that I will definitely be stocking up on as much as I can because even when I'm making corsets and I use this on the insides of the corsets it just provides an extra level of security and it supplies more structure to the actual garment. Next for 4 95 also because all of the fabrics are 4 95 per meter I got this fabric for a lining and as soon as I saw this fabric after picking up the black I knew that they had to go together. Now this fabric is nice and thick, it's nice and strong it has a slight bit of stretch on the bias and it's just the best quality I could ask for and especially for the price point of it as well. Like there's no going wrong with it. So I got two meters of this orange fabric to line the inside of the jacket and maybe do a few pocket details or strap details as well. I'll see as I'm going through the creative process. But for 4 95 this fabric is so durable, it's so strong and it is just so gorgeous. As soon as you walk into the store, it is literally like fabric heaven. There is so many rolls that every single time I go in there, I end up spending more than two hours in there before I even am able to stop and pick something up because there is just so much stock which is something I really appreciate from a fabric outlet. It's like upholstery fabrics, leathers, lining fabrics, cotton fabrics for making masks and so much more. I just recommend going in and checking out the stock that they do have. I do recommend checking them out on Instagram or calling into store. So what I'll do is I'll just pop the handle down here or up here and you can just follow that through to Instagram or Facebook. So there we have it, that's everything covered about fabrics and materials, threads, everything that you will need to do this project. I gave you a little bit of information on how you can contact them and get orders sent directly to you or pick them up from store. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get to mapping our patterns down on the fabric, cutting them out and preparing them for actually starting our project. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we're just going to start by getting all of our patterns down in the fabric first so we can get everything prepped, everything ready, we can get everything overlocked, we can get everything cut. So we're just starting by getting our pockets down, our pants pattern down, our jacket pattern down, we're going to cut it and we'll get into it. We're going to need a scissors. I got this scissors from the fabric outlet. I've been looking for a good sturdy shears for a very long time and one with a bit of length to it as well because there's nothing worse than when you're cutting and you're only snipping away that much at a time. But I know they had this one and they also had a 10 inch one. So if you are looking for one that is a bit larger, they also had a smaller one as well. So if you're looking for one that's a bit smaller, you can go into the store, you can get in contact with them and you can pick these up. The blades are so sharp and they are so thin, they just taper off to a nice thin edge and they're so nice and sharp and they literally cut through about like 10 layers of fabric at the exact same time. 
So now that everything is cut and ready to go, I'm just preparing everything by overlocking all my edges since it is a fabric that frays. I just want to make sure that it's nice and clean as I'm going. Just stitching up the pockets and giving everything a nice press so it is nice and clean. I do advise doing this if you're going to do more structured pockets or if you do want to go for a cleaner finish if you are going to top stitch either because this will just help assist you along the way to make sure that you are getting a nice clean finish and a nice clean result. So here I am just pressing in all the seam allowance on every pocket piece before I attach it to the pants. Just This just ensures for a much nicer and much cleaner finish. I also advise just while you're doing this to get all of the pockets and all of the extra pieces ready just because you can get them all out of the way at the start and just have everything prepared for when you will need it shortly. So here's all our pieces now, so now we can go ahead and start top stitching all of our pieces. We're using an orange thread to contrast the black, so it goes with the orange fabrics that we have picked out. And I just think it gives, her, it, gives it a much nicer aesthetic and overall look. As you can see, it has a lovely, nice, clean finish when you do the two lines parallel to each other. So just with all of the pocket pieces, all of the flaps that are going over the pocket, we're just top stitching them. Once that's done, we'll give them a nice press and attach them to our front and back. When sewing the pockets and you want to sew the flap that lies over the pocket, what I suggest doing is first of all do an understitch so it's facing away from the direction of the pocket and then fold it back and do a top stitch just so it lies back in the direction that you want it to lie. Afterwards you can give it a press to give it a nice clean finish but this is what I typically do first. Once I've top stitched the pockets with the orange tread, I then attach them to the pants with a black tread. I like to do the top stitching first with the orange tread and attach it with the black tread just because I do think that it gives a cleaner finish overall and if you do make any mistakes it does blend in with the fabric. Now do be careful with the cargo pockets just because they are a little bit trickier so do take your time and if you do make a mistake just remove it and you can pop it back on again and afterwards we're just going to press our seams nice and beautiful. So now that we have all of our pockets attached, what we're going to do is connect the front and back crotch lines. So sewing front to front and back to back. After we do that, then we're going to top stitch down the seam allowance with the orange tread again, contrasting, doing two parallel lines down the crotch of the pants just to keep up with the overall aesthetic of the look that we are going for. Once we have this done, we can then go ahead and attach our drawstring waistband. First of all, I'm just doing a basing stitch and then I'm top stitching it down to just secure the casing down. So now we get to attach the snap closure on the top seam of the sleeves. So just sewing one line down on the outside and one line on the inside so it's secured on both sides of the closure. This just ensures that it's not going to rip or it's not going to come off and just make sure it's nice and secure. After we have the snaps attached, what we're going to do is attach the raglan sleeves to the bodice. Just take your time with this as you are sewing around a lot of curves so it does take a little bit of practice. Next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to sew up the side seams all the way up to under the armpit and continuing that stitch straight down the sleeve to seal the sleeve shut but doing it in one continuous stitch from the bottom of the bodice to the end of the sleeve cuff. We're then going to repeat the same steps for the lining. We didn't line the sleeves since we used the snap closure so we're just doing the lining for the bodice portion and we'll be connecting it to the seam allowance on the inside of the sleeves. So now we're just going to switch over to our orange tread just so we can top stitch the lining to the bodice and just sandwiching that zipper in between the main shell and the lining fabric just so we can get a nice concealed zipper. <laughs> 
just when you come up to the collar, be extra cautious. It is a bit trickier to do, so do just take your time. Practice makes perfect, so if you do get it wrong the first time, just pick the, pick the stitch and just go ahead and do it again. But just take your time going around the collar and the sleeves. So we're just going to repeat the same process for the waistband of the jacket as we did for the pants. First of all, we're just going to secure it to the jacket, then overlock the seam, and then we're going to flip it in and top stitch it down just to hold it in place and give it a nice clean finish. So that covers everything that we need to construct our jacket and pants. We have our finished products. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop everything on and we'll be back in a second for some final thoughts and I will reveal the look to you as well. So here is the finished result. I hope you love it just as much as I love it too. If you like this video, you can pop over to my Instagram at Robin underscore hearts underscore where you'll find a link to my YouTube. And on both platforms, I create more content to do with sewing, drag hair, and makeup artistry also. If you like this video and you like this outfit, don't hesitate to head down to the fabric outlet and pick up some supplies for yourself. If there is anything that you do end up creating with materials from the fabric outlet, please tag me on Instagram and tag the fabric outlet also as we would love to see what you are creating. Thank you so much for watching this video. We really hope you enjoyed everything that you did see here today. Is If there is anything you would like to see us do with materials in the future, please do let us know by sending me or sending the fabric outlet a direct message on Instagram or Facebook.